All right, how's everybody doing today? Class of 2013. Today I'm just going to be talking about uh, reaction mechanisms for nucleophilic addition. So, before I start, you know, there's just some key, you know, terms that I would like for us to define. Uh, so, what is a nucleophile, right? A nucleophile is a chemical species, right? So, a chemical species that donates an electron pair to an electrophile to form a chemical bond in a reaction. Now I'm, I'm probably not going to write down everything I say just for the sake of the length of this video but another thing to note about nucleophiles is that um, you know nucleophiles have at least one active lone pair of electrons they can be fully negatively charged or just have a high electron um, density in a particular area of the molecule but nonetheless um, that helps it attack a positive center so in this definition the one word you guys may not be familiar with or you may be is um, an electrophile so let's just go ahead and define an electrophile. An electrophile is a positively charged, positively charged species. I apologize about my handwriting. The po positively charged species that that is attracted to attracted to an electron rich center so um, the electrophile the electrophile in um, the reaction mechanisms I'll describe is going to be the carbon in the carbon double bond and uh, we really just need to know about this is that like this bond is polar um, the uh, oxygen is more electronegative meaning that the carbon is par partially positively charged the the uh, oxygen is going to be partially negatively charged, right? We know that we're pushing more electrons this way to the oxygen. And um, uh, because the carbon is partially positively charged, this is what kind of allows the nucleophilic addition reaction to take place because we carbon is um, the uh, electrophile and it allows the negatively uh, negative nucleophile to um, attack the carbon. So this is what makes the initial attack possible. Alright, so, you know, first the reaction mechanism I want to talk about is the um, react, uh, nucleophilic addition of hydrogen cyanide to uh, ketones and um, aldehydes. So, first one I'll do is, see, hydrogen cyanide. We know that uh, cyanide is actually a very strong nucleophile, so just note that. So, we're just going to react hydrogen cyanide. Let's do HCN to propanoin. Right, so we know the the general structure for propanoin would be like um, we'd have this and uh, for propanoin we know that these R groups are the substituent groups going to be CH3 so let's just go ahead and do that CH3, right now I'm just writing everything out just to make it easier. We have CH3 and then we know we're going to have HCN and we know that our cyanide molecule is going to look like this. So we know that these are going to be the three components involved in the mechanism. So after you draw these out, it becomes pretty easy um, when you're trying to follow through the steps. So let's just draw out um, propanoin again. And I'm just going to draw cyanide just kind of floating right here. I'm going to draw the, um, the ion. All right, you know, H is still there, but right now the ion is just important. So the first thing that's going to happen is that remember that this negative, this, this lone pair over here, remember the nucleophile needs to have at least one lone pair, that's going to attack this carbon atom. And we know that this carbon is partially positive. The oxygen is partially negative. So we know that the cyanide is going to make a bond with this carbon, and it's going to displace these electrons, and it's going to push these electrons at least to a pair of electrons in the carbon oxygen bond to the oxygen. So we know that we're going to make our oxygen even more negative and we're forming a new bond on the carbon. So we know that this is going to yield on um, 
just erase this. If you guys can just remember that, we know that that's going to yield. Remember, these CH groups are still there. The cyanide bonds, like I said, and um, one of the bonds on the carbon oxygen atom is broken, and those two electrons are shifted towards the oxygen. So now we know the oxygen is a lot more negative, like I said. Uh, so now we have, now our kind of hydrogen comes into play. Let me just kind of bring this over to the side. We've got our HCN. So now we know that um, this oxygen is really going to be attracted to this positive hydrogen, right? So this hydrogen will um, attack, well, this hydrogen will bond with this oxygen or with the lone pairs in the oxygen. So we can um, draw the final answer, or the final product, I should say, to look resemble this. So this is pretty much the uh, reaction from a hydrogen cyanide to propanoin. So again, just like a summary, like I said, um, the the Carbon is partially positive, so that allows the initial attack, initial attack for the cyanide. The cyanide bonds with the carbon. Um, you know, carbon can only have the four bonds, so that one of the bonds needs to be broken from the carbon-oxygen bond. So those, those, those two electrons, that pair of electrons, is you know repelled onto the oxygen, and um, after that, the oxygen becomes even more negative, allowing it for to take on a hydrogen, and that hydrogen comes from the hydrogen cyanide. I'm pretty sure if you also do these reactions in water. Um, the hydrogen can also come from the um, H2O or the H3O plus. Okay, so here I'll just do one more. You know, it's just the con the concept's the same, so it doesn't really matter. I'll do another one: um, hydrogen cyanide to ethanol. Ethanol. Um, let's just draw out everything, like I said. Just draw out all our components. So you know, we have H. CN, we know our cyanide molecule, our ion will look like that. Uh, let's draw out um, ethanol. So again, these are going to be the three components in the reaction mechanism. So if you just draw these out on the side, you know that it's what you're going to want to have in your answer. It just makes everything a lot easier. So let's just draw out ethanol. And let's show um, how the carbon-oxygen bond is partially, uh, it's, it's polar. So Again, we know that um, carbon is uh, partially positive, the oxygen is partially negative. Uh, let's draw our cyanide ion right here. Again, we know that these lone pairs of elect um, electrons are going to attack the carbon center. That's going to push this bond right here. And we're going to make uh, this. Again, it it should look very familiar again like I said the concepts are the same so remember the cyanide made a new bond with the carbon and um, because of that to make room for that new bond these electrons got pushed forward you know we still have the hydrogen we still have the oxygen in there so now we know that our oxygen is partially negative so remember in the previous reaction this oxygen being partially negative took on a hydrogen we know that we still have a hydrogen here floating around so that hydrogen is going to bond with this this oxygen right here in this molecule and then we should end up with our final product. So let's go ahead and do that. And now we have let's draw a cyanide um hydrogen cyanide. Again that makes this H partially positive. Uh, these lone pairs are going to attract the H. The H is going to come right here and bond with the oxygen, so we're going to get hydroxide. And we'll end up with something resembling this. And sorry, there was supposed to be an H right there. So yeah, this is our final product for the um, nucleophilic addition uh, of hydrogen cyanide to ethanol. So uh, thank you for watching. Uh, tune in later to my other videos. Uh, please subscribe. This will be on YouTube. Thank you.